Welcome to another episode of Kenny's Cantina, eating in style on the road. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're finding my website helpful in the RV kitchen and you're enjoying the recipe. Before we get started, I wanted to point out that I'm recording the show at different RV parks around the country. Sometimes the Wi-Fi and cell coverage can be a little sketchy. This may impact the audio track from time to time. So should an episode have some glitches, understand that when you're on the road, some technical difficulties can occur. Also, depending on internet coverage, sometimes there's a lag as to when I can upload shows. Thanks for your understanding. One of my most requested holiday dishes is my wild rice dressing. It goes exceptionally well with turkey, dressings a flavorful side that blends the flavors of aromatic rice, sage, sausage, and mushrooms, which will complement whatever holiday dinner you're celebrating. It will be a big hit at your next gathering. But don't just use this for holidays. It's a great side dish anytime. It's an easy recipe, and the rice comes out wonderfully. Your guests will be complimenting you and asking for the recipe. Prep time on this dish is about 30 minutes with a cooking time of 60 minutes. It serves 6 to 12 people. And for storage, you can store it in the refrigerator for up, up for a week for your leftovers, and it will freeze as well. Ingredients, we're going to use one pound of sage sausage, one sweet onion, two four-ounce cans of mushrooms, one cup of wild rice blend, one cup of basmati rice, one cup of long grain rice, two cans of chicken and rice soup, a can of cream of mushroom soup, a cup of bread crumbs, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of minced garlic, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of poultry seasoning, one teaspoon of ground sage, and two cups of chicken or turkey stock. We're going to start off by browning the sausage. And we're going to do this on the stove. Let me get it over here and get it in. Let me squish this down. And then I'm going to start kind of breaking it up as it starts heating up here. We're going to let that brown. So it's going to take it about 10 minutes on high for the sausage brown. It's going to start sizzling here. Okay. So let's let that set for 10 minutes. I'm going to stir it periodically, and we'll be back. We're back, it's been 10 minutes, and the sausage is pretty much all brown here. Let me turn that off, remove it from the heat. And I'm gonna add this to a roasting pan. Let me dump it in here, okay. The bottom of the pan, I use, I like to use a roasting pan for mixing all the ingredients together. I found that the dressing is kind of easier to mix in a roasting pan than in a mixing bowl. So the next ingredient that we're going to do is we're going to chop up the onion. I'm going to slice this into quarter-inch dices. Okay, that crosswise. Then let me turn my skillet back on. And I'm going to add butter. Okay, the butter's in the pan. It's melting. Let me swirl that around, get it evenly. Okay, let me add those onions. And then now I'm going to take a tablespoon of minced garlic. Stick that in. And add my poultry seasoning. Put 
that in there. Now let me stir this up. I love the smell of onion and garlic. It smells so good. All right, we're going to cook this so the onions are translucent. And that's going to take about five minutes. So let's let that cook. Okay, we're back. The, my onions are all translucent. And I'm going to take this and add this on top of the sausage. All right, so I got the sausage and the onions. Let me kind of mix this up. The next ingredient are the canned mushrooms. Let me get those. All right. Now you want to drain the, the liquid out of the mushrooms. So you just want those, those meat of those mushrooms. Let me put those in. And let's mix that together. Okay. Next ingredient is the wild rice blend. Sprinkle that on. Okay. And then we're going to mix that. I like to mix between each ingredient. This ensures that all the ingredients are blended evenly. Next is our basmati rice. Let's add that to the mix. And let's stir that. And our next one is the long grain rice. Cup. Put that in. And we're going to mix that in. It's all blending nicely here. Next is our chicken and rice soup. I use a lot of different rices in this dish. So let's open up the can of soup. And this one don't drain. You want the broth in it. Get the other one. Put it in. Let's mix that up real good. Now comes the cream of mushroom soup. Let me open up that can. Take my spatula, kind of scoop that in. Get it out. Okay. We'll get this mixed in. Kind of want to get that cream of mushroom soup covering everything. All right. Let's add our garlic. Okay. That's in there. Mix that around real quick. And the salt. Spread that in. Mix that. And our pepper. Right. Let's add a little more poultry seasoning. Another teaspoon of that. That in. Mix it. Now the gray, ground sage. Now the sage kind of gives you an earthy taste to it, which I which I like. You know, for this natural thing, and sage is good. So we get that mixed up. Now time for the breadcrumbs and in our measuring cup, and stick that in. Okay. Now the breadcrumbs have to hold the dressing together some and everything stick together. At this point, the dressing is kind of clumpy and thick, right? kind of chunky. We're going to add now the broth or the stock. I'm going to put two cups of that in. It's one, two. The stock is going to thin that takeaway that, that we got when we added the breadcrumbs. And it's also going to provide the liquid that we need to actually cook the rice when it's in the oven. So after mixing this, the consistency of the dressing is it's smoothed out and it's kind of you can shake it. It's kind of kind of jiggles like jelly when you do it. So we're pretty much prepped here. Let's take a uh, nine by thirteen pan, and I'm going to dump this into the pan, and let me. Spread it out, and let me get some aluminum foil, and we're going to cover the dish. Okay, so that will be ready to go into the oven. 
So now what we want to do is we want to preheat our oven, and we're going to let that preheat. In my RV oven, I found that it's turned the oven all the way up, preheating, and then you can back down the temperature. And I use an internal thermometer to make sure I have the right temperature. So let's give that a few minutes to preheat, and I'll be back in a couple minutes. Okay, the internal thermometer is saying 350, so let's take the dish, 9 by 13, covered in foil. Let's stick it in here, and let me set the timer for 30 minutes. I'll talk to you shortly. So our dressing has been in the oven for 30 minutes. Now what we're going to do, you open it up, boy, it's smelling good in here. I love cooking and getting the smells in the RV. Now I'm going to slide this out, twist it. So I'm flipping it around 180 degrees. And let me close that up. And let's set the timer again. Another 30 minutes, and that's on. So by flipping this around or spinning it in the oven, it helps to make the dressing cook more evenly. You can get hot spots in an oven, especially in an RV oven. So this helps with that. So let's let that uh, cook for 30 minutes, and I'll be right back with you. So we've got our second 30 minutes here cooked. So it's been in the oven for 60 minutes. Take it out. All right. And I'm going to take the foil off. Ooh, that smells good and looks good. And I'm going to let this stand for 15 minutes, kind of just finish cooking and soaking up the juices, and then we'll give it a try. So see you back in 15. Welcome back. Our dressing is done. Let me take a taste. Mmm. Mmm. You can taste that sausage and the onions and the sage comes through. And I really like the various rice blends. This is great. All right, so let's serve this as a side dish for your holiday turkey or for other meals and other meats. Whatever you're cooking, enjoy. So there's a few tips in this. One, Choose a wild rice blend that has lots of wild rice in it when you're picking out rice to this dish. And if you can find wild rice alone, you can add about a half a box to the recipe. You can't always find wild rice by itself. Recently, I went to seven different grocery stores looking for it and couldn't find it. So the wild rice blend is nice, and if you can find the wild rice, add a little bit of that in. So I use a roasting pan to mix the dressing in. This just makes it a lot easier than it, trying to do it in a mixing bowl. It helps that you can spread it out. And then tip, I mix the dressing at each step, adding in each ingredient separately. This helps to infuse the flavor of the ingredient throughout. Now here's a tip. You can put the dressing the day before cooking and store it overnight in the refrigerator to help reduce prep time on the day of your dinner that you're having. So keep that in mind. And once again, in preheating the oven, I turn it all the way up and then back down to the desired temperature. And I use an internal oven thermometer to ensure the proper temperature. And then rotating the dressing halfway through makes it even cooking in an RV oven. So I hope you enjoy your wild rice. It's easy to make. It comes out, and people love it. So thanks for cooking with me on that. Now let's move on to Kenny's Q&A time. Last couple episodes, we're on a guacamole and my chihuahua cocktail. The Q&A portion of the show has become quite popular, and I love the research and thought process that goes into my answers to your questions. I always learn something. And I'm all about sharing and exploring new ideas. And your questions get me hitting the book and getting my creative juices going. So let's get to the mail. I found the questions on my guacamole quite interesting. They range from history to specific avocado questions to care and feeding of your avocado. Our first question is very special. Gail from New Mexico asks, Hi, I'm eight years old, and I wanted to ask you if you knew where the name guacamole came from. I asked my parents, and they told me to look it up, but I didn't know what to do. Mom made your guacamole dish, and I really liked it a lot. 
But because they don't know the answer, I would like to be able to show them that I found out. Can you help me? P.S. One more question. Do you also know where avocados first came from? My mom helped me with this note to you, and she put this last question in. Thank you, Kenny. I like your avocado dish, Kale. Kale, it's great to hear from you, and I'm glad you like my guacamole. Avocados originally came from, from Mexico and have been around for a long, long time. My research revealed that the oldest one found in a cave in Puebla, Mexico, dates back to 2000 BC. The name guacamole actually comes from the Aztec native language and translates to avocado sauce. The guaco being the avocado and mole being sauce. Gail, thanks for your interesting questions and stay inquisitive. Wyatt from Colorado asks, do you know how many varieties of avocados there are and is one better than the other? Wyatt, there are about 500 varieties of avocado. Who knew? Hust is the variety that we find most often in the U.S. supermarkets. Sometimes you can find a tropical variety which are larger and have green skin. They're good as well. Both varieties make a good guacamole and taste good on their own. Thanks for the question, Wyatt. William from Australia asks, what state do avocados come from? Hello, William from Down Under. In the U.S., avocados are mostly grown for market in California. You can also find them in South Texas and Florida as well. Mexico is the largest provider of avocados, and in your neck of the world, Indonesia is one of the world's largest producers, according to World Atlas. Thanks for your question, William. Now, Sam from New England asks, my wife and I are having a dispute whether or not an avocado is a fruit or a vegetable. I told her if it has a seed, it should be a fruit. And she said, even tomatoes have seeds in them. Do you know which one of us is right? Love your show. I'm glad you love the show, Sam. Thanks for watching. I don't like to take sides in family disputes, but both avocado and tomatoes are technically fruit. The distinction is that they both come from the flower of the plant and have seeds. FYI, cucumbers and bell peppers are also fruit, even though from a culinary standpoint, we consider these vegetables. I hope this settles this dispute, Sam. Please don't shoot the messenger. Now, Leticia from Louisiana asks, what is the best way to save half an avocado? Thanks for your question, Leticia. Avocados turn brown due to exposure to the air. Wrapping the open avocado and plastic wrap will help. Better yet, vacuum sealing the avocado will help to preserve the half avocado better. Actually, I've, I've been running this experience, experiment. I've had a open avocado vacuum sealed for over a week now and it's still bright green. So thanks again, Leticia. In a related question, Hans from Sweden asks, at what temperature should I keep my avocados at? Can I refrigerate Hans, you can refrigerate avocados. This slows the ripening process. If your avocados are not quite ripe, though, leave them out at room temperature for a day or two, and, and they'll ripen. So it all depends on the ripeness of the avocado, if you want to store it refrigerated or not. Thanks for your question, Hans. A couple last questions on avocados. Margaret from the Netherlands asks, can you eat the avocado skin? Margaret, technically you can eat the skin. However, in the U.S., most avocados are hot and its skin is thick and it would be leathery to eat. Some other varieties have thinner skins that, that you can eat. So use trial and error when deciding to eat or not. Thanks for your question, Margaret. Bill from Wisconsin asks, can I feed my dog avocados with their meal? Bill, thanks for this interesting and important question for dog owners. I had not thought about this. I did some research, and you cannot feed your dog avocados. Some quantities may be all right, but to be on the safe side, the answer is no. Keep your dog healthy and safe, Bill. Skip the avocado. My other recent episode was the Chihuahua cocktail that is made with grapefruit juice. Dr. Graham from Ohio brings up an important point. He states, grapefruit juice is supposed to be good for you, but that might not always be the case. Drinking grapefruit juice together with certain medicines can increase the levels of the drug to be harmful or in some case fatal. I'm a physician who just found this to be true. 
a lot of people who are not aware of the harm grapefruit can cause if they're on a new or pre-existing medication. You might want to add this information to your next show. The new drugs that have been just introduced to the public may or may not be affected, and the individuals could end up in the hospital with, in a serious condition. They should ask their doctor not only what foods they can have, but what liquids that may be harmful to them if they were to congest, uh, ingest them. I love to cook, and I love your show. Dr. Graham, thanks for your warning. I'm aware of this, and I ask my guests if they have any problems with drinking grapefruit juice before I serve them a chihuahua. I should have made mention of that in the episode, so thanks for bringing it to my attention. I'm glad you're enjoying the show, and thanks again for your important comment. I want to thank all my viewers and fans who took the time to cook with me and who have taken time out of their busy day to drop me a note with a question or a comment. This show is getting popular with several thousand viewers for each show and some shows reaching tens of thousands. So thank you. You enjoying the show is what it's all about, and I appreciate your viewing. I'm excited about my next show. I'll be sharing with you how to make a delicious smoky yum yum sauce that goes great on seafood, sushi, Chinese food, and even meatloaf. It goes well on almost anything. So join me in preparing my smoked yum yum sauce on my next show. Stay tuned for the next Kenny's Cantina eating in style on the road. Thanks for watching. You can also find Kenny's Cantina on Facebook where I post additional pics of what I'm cooking and pictures of what I'm doing on my travels. So like my page and stay up to date in between podcasts. Kenny's Cantina wouldn't be possible without the help of my sponsors, IBC Productions and the Roadhogs Media Network. And welcome to my new sponsor, Benjamino Frantini and his company, Aromos de Jabon in St. Augustine, Florida. So a big thanks to them. See you all on the road.